Hello, boogies. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, go back out. Go back out. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'll be right there. Okay. Hello, boogies. Come on in. It's your favorite 20 year old. Welcome to the hour long extravaganza finale of Am I the A-hole? Season one. <laughs> if you don't know Joe, Joe is the editor on Ooga Booga and uh, he texted me a couple days ago. I told him I'm gonna have another video and he said, is it going to be another Am I the A-hole video? And I said, no, you idiot. Dumb dumb brain you got you have one. I just made an am I the a-hole video You think I'd make another one right back to back? He was like, oh, yeah, duh stupid me, right? And then I thought about it for a second I was like, you know what wouldn't it be funny if I made another am I the a-hole video? <laughs> really this is all just for me uh, so that I can just do a little self-deprecating joke So now joking would be like wait you are the idiot. You're the idiot. not me you that's right It was me all along Joe edits the videos on Ooga Booga, but I'm gonna steal them. Him and I are gonna work on the friends video We got a friends beer in a movie. That's oh, that's, that's gonna be a lot of work. It looks like it's gonna be a very good video. I cannot wait to upload that one. But that's what we're gonna be working on for a while. So I'm gonna steal Joe so the uploads might be a little bit more uh, sparse. So I thought I'd give you guys an, uh, an extravaganza video here uh, to hold you over. You guys know how Am I the A-hole works by now, I assume. So this is a subreddit where people come with their stories and someone in the story is likely an A-hole, but we're trying to figure out who it is. And let me tell you, uh, the reason I wanted to make an Am I the A-hole video and an extravaganza at that, in the last week, for some reason, there have been dozens of just banger posts. Like the best Am I the A-hole posts I've ever seen. This video is gonna be super fun. So let's start it out. Am I the A-hole for calling my mom when my husband refused to listen to me? So she's 26 years old and she recently moved into her first home. I am also four months pregnant with our first baby. Ooh, congratulations. Two months to go. The pregnancy has been very hard. I have horrible morning sickness. It reached a really bad point where I passed out, hit my head and my doctor admitted me to the hospital for a week. Okay, uh, when I finally got home, my husband allowed his brother's family to move into two of our three bedrooms. They were evicted, I don't know why. The house was a complete wreck. Trash, dirty clothes, used diapers. So her husband's brother moved him, his wife, and their baby into their three bedroom house. My husband told me it wasn't that bad. My reply was fine then, you should have the house cleaned up before I wake up. Completely exhausted, I fell asleep for four hours. I woke up and went to get a drink of water. I couldn't. Every Every glass we own is scattered around the house. They didn't clean a single thing. I passive aggressively started to pick up the dirty dishes and wash them. <laughs> Nothing worse than someone doing the laundry and just like side eyeing you like, oh, this one. Just trying to watch TV like, okay, <laughs> okay, I get it. Following morning, I was trying my best to work when the kids were crying nonstop. Oh, there's multiple, there's multiple children banging on the walls, so on. Their mom was in her room for hours, ignoring them. That's a good parent. When my husband came home, he was upset with me over how I didn't make his brother's wife feel welcome in our home. <laughs> then continued to complain how nothing was done while he was at work all day in the house. While he was at work all day in the house. That led to a fight where I told him I am too sick to have company and they need to leave. I was beyond frustrated, exhausted. I physically couldn't do it anymore. I called my mom asking if I could stay with her, telling her the whole story in front of my husband. My mom came with my brothers. I have three older brothers. My mom was super angry and she told my husband, since your family can and stay, so can we. My mom quickly took charge. I was sent to bed. My brother started cleaning, complaining loudly at how disgusting my brother-in-law's family is, along with what a horrible husband my husband is for putting me through this while I was sick. Just immediately, like, pregnancies are tough. Not just physically, but emotionally. So I, oh man, you just all of a sudden, you start having like a messy house. There's nothing worse than a messy house. I got a text from my mother-in-law calling me an A-hole for not helping my husband clean up the house and putting my brother-in-law in an uncomfortable position by having my mom boss him around. <laughs> Edited to add an update. When my mother-in-law showed up, she was super angry outside. I could hear shouting, but I couldn't understand what was said. Once inside, she was shocked. My house looked really bad. My brother-in-law lied to her about what happens. My mother-in-law quickly started to help my mom in the bossing mode. My house is not just clean, but deep cleaned. There's good parenting, right? Where you, you just call your mom and she comes and cleans. <laughs> <laughs> my brother-in-law and his kids are now staying with mother-in-law. She didn't know about the eviction. My in-laws helped them financially a couple months ago. My mother-in-law was not happy about it. Sounds like everything's going this woman's way. Sister-in-law refused to come out of her bedroom. She would scream through the door. This is a, this is a mother of multiple children with the temperament of multiple children. <laughs> Last little bit, I did talk to my husband. He seemed very remorseful. I asked for some space. He is staying at a hotel. Both moms felt like I should have someone here since I'm sick. Both moms have set up a meal plan. Ah, where they trade off who will bring in dinner. It was mother-in-law's idea. Thank you for your advice. I truly appreciate it. This one seems like it was resolved. Jesus, people, God. First of all, it's it's fitting that we start with the pregnancy story because all Emma the A-hole stories are pregnancy stories. <laughs> when you live together with somebody, it's no longer your standards. You gotta keep things clean. I don't. Who? How do you become a guest 
and then just terrorize a home. If I'm a guest in the home, I'm like, I'm gonna be doing chores. All my stuff is gonna be neatly put away in my room that you have graciously bestowed upon me. How do people just become unruly guests with children? Am I the a-hole for hiding my pregnancy and showing up to my sister-in-law's baby shower? It's another pregnancy story. They all are. So she's 23 and she's currently eight months pregnant. Oh my God, that baby's been in there forever. That's gotta come out. It's like three months past two, woman. We have been keeping it a secret and plan to tell people around this time, but a few months after my pregnancy, my sister-in-law, who's 26, found out she was pregnant. And then it just felt awkward to announce. People are weird. If I was pregnant and I was announcing it, here's what I would do. I'd be like, baby. <laughs> Baby here. That's how I announced my pregnancy. Hey, how's it going? Baby here now. Baby inside. We have to announce our baby. Mm. No, you don't. You just say baby now here. I don't find this romantic at all, like these moments or sentimental. If you want to enjoy it, fine, but it's just it just feels a little weird to me. I've been married to my husband for only six months, but we've been together on and off since we were 14. Permanently together since we were 16. Wait, wait, wait. You've been married for six months, but you're eight months pregnant? Premarital smooching? You are an a-hole. For your sin against God. When we were 17, we found out I was pregnant. I had complications. I gave birth to my preemie still. So this pregnancy, we've been extra cautious and secretive. Okay, I can understand now your reluctance to tell everybody that you're pregnant. You kind of just wanted to wait until it was uh, more of a sure thing. But as I developed a bump, I've been wearing hoodies and loose clothing. Uh, with that, I kind of just looked like I gained weight. I feel like pregnancy women have a glow. They have they, they have a certain radiation to them. No. Not like radioactive, like like radiance. Oh no, words are hard. We were hesitant on me going. I was just going to send my husband with a gift of mine to the uh, the baby shower. But sister-in-law said she really wanted me there. I decided to try my best to hide the bump and go. It was all going well, no one noticed. I mean, I got a few looks, but no one asked me anything. Then about an hour in, I started having tiny cramps and eventually got more aggressive. I told my husband, we need to leave. I need to go to the hospital. As we were walking, a sharp pain hit me and I grabbed the picnic table next to me and I almost stumbled over. I really thought I was in labor. The pains were getting so intense. People started surrounding us, asking what was the matter. And my husband said, she's pregnant, guys, she's pregnant. By the time we got to the hospital, my pains had subsided. They said it was a false labor. Freaking babies and their lies. No one's gonna appreciate that joke but me. I know, I know, I don't care, I don't care. There's certain things that I find funny. My husband and I both had angry text messages from the sister-in-law and other guests at the party about us hiding the pregnancy. How, how messed up it was and how they couldn't believe I showed up pregnant. How I had a baby stunt. <laughs> a baby stunt? How do you guys feel about this one? Let me think, let me think on this one. It might hurt people's feelings if they felt like you were keeping it a secret from them. Almost like, you, what, you, you weren't gonna tell us? They don't know how you feel about not wanting to one-up uh, the, the sister-in-law. You know, they don't know those feelings, right? So they just have to kind of guess why you'd be keeping it a secret from them. I think it, maybe it takes a little bit of time for people to, to, you know, calm down, let cooler heads prevail. But I think in the end, people should come to the conclusion like, oh, why is she, why did she feel like she couldn't tell us? And then ask. But within the situation, oh wait, she got the a-hole batch. I wouldn't call her an a-hole. She had her reasons for not telling people. And also like this whole baby stun thing, come on. If she's gonna keep it a secret for eight months. <laughs> right. Like clearly she doesn't want people to know. So she's gonna go out of her way to try to steal the thunder from somebody else? Come on now, I don't believe that. In this instance, you're the a-hole. You are eight months along, can go into labor any day, and it comes out at your sister-in-law's baby shower. That is extremely disrespectful. Oh, grow up. Oh, children. I The world is filled with just tiny little children. And there's gonna be more now. <laughs> listen, listen to the words you use. If you think extreme disrespect is having a, a cramp from your baby that you're having and you haven't told anybody yet and then going to the hospital, I wouldn't call that disrespectful in the first place. But then you add extreme, but it's my day. We're gonna celebrate my baby. Dog, have some empathy for other people. Have some understanding. If it's my birthday and then you collapse and then you have to go to the hospital, I wouldn't be like, oh great. You took away my shine on my birthday. Roll with the punches, man. We're gonna have two babies? This is amazing. Celebratory moments. People just need to have a little bit more understanding for each other. I get why you kept it private in the beginning. You should have told them before the shower and offered to not come if it would be an issue. Maybe I'm just like not big on like uh, baby shower culture. <laughs> You're making it seem like it's the sacred tradition that cannot be trampled upon. People seem to be misunderstanding my point. I'm not saying that the, the poster needs to share her personal information with the world if she's uncomfortable. I'm saying that if you're keeping pregnancy a secret at eight months, when you can go into labor at any time, don't go to events that you could ruin like this. Was the event ruined? Was it really ruined? I just want to hate, I hate, I hate people. I want to punch them. Someone else make a point, because that person made a poor point. You're the a-hole. Come on, 
You should have told sister-in-law that you were pregnant prior to the event to let her decide if you should come. Are pregnant women not allowed at other pregnant women's showers? Is this like a baby competition? These are moments where you celebrate with the people you care about. There's gonna be another addition to your family. That's cause for celebration. Maybe the sister-in-law? Her feelings were slightly hurt, but those feelings were all ego feelings. Where it's like, oh, you're overshining me. Those are not good feelings that you want to like protect. It's crazy. Baby showers and weddings, people go absolutely loco on the subreddit. Yeah, maybe that's, it's like there's just like a culture around baby showers. <laughs> Am I the a-hole for cussing out a teacher after she gave my information to a reporter? Interesting stuff. I'm one of the few but growing number of single men who foregone marriage and became a dad on my own. In my case, I used a surrogate three times, so I have three boys between ages five and ten. Willingly single parents with three children. I mean, like, that good for you, because you have to make enough money for you and then three children. I guess if you're if you're well off or if you don't have like demanding hours and you can juggle those two, I think that's fine. But man, willingly choosing three kids by yourself, ooh, <laughs> like for the kids sake. But you know what? Everyone has their own lives, has their own situations. Maybe this turns out really well. I don't know. I'm neither an advocate nor opponent of single parent surrogacy. I did what worked for me. Yeah, fair. You know what? If it works for them, they just have the a free schedule and they can raise three kids. The stress doesn't get to them, fine. I also don't promote it the same way people promote their personal lives for clout. You and I got beef now? That brings me to my son's second grade teacher, Mrs. F. I got a random call from a reporter asking to interview me for a magazine piece on men resorting to surrogacy to have kids. I thought it was a joke, but he had all sorts of information, including the names of my kids and what I did for work. I asked how he got my information and he said from Mrs. F, who was a friend of his. In fact, she gave him my number. I was passed. Uh, Pissed, probably. The next day, I told Mrs. F about the call, and she said it would be so exciting to be in a magazine and online. I asked why the F did she put my personal life out there. That's a total betrayal. She didn't say anything, so I called her uh, an effing moron who needs to grow up. <laughs> Nothing screams maturity like uh, throwing around insults. <laughs> you're, such, you're such an idiot. <laughs> grow up. That's a total betrayal. Et tu, Brutus. <laughs> oh, Julie, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up bad memories. I'm sorry, Julie. Calm down now. Okay, good boy. This is him recounting the story days later and he's still like super agitated about it to drop an f-bomb even if you were the one who was wronged have some empathy and understanding for other people dumb dumb brain you got you have one she probably thought i complained to the principal but that's not my style i will tell you stuff to your face now the vp principal isn't wait, wait isn't the the p in vp principal in this context like it would be vice president but is it the vice president principal? <laughs> I think the P is supposed to be principal. I don't know. I, some, this is bad, I get bad vibes from this guy. I don't know. Now the VP principal is acting like an intermediary between us after she said I cussed her out, which is true. <laughs> he did say that I was out of line, but she was even way more out of line. He asked me to be understanding because she's young and lives online. I told him that he's just mad that he actually has to do some work now. Pleasant man, aren't you? And the funny part is that I'm not even mad at her anymore. I don't like her, but it's not like she matters in a few months. I just, the I got the worst vibes. He got the not the a-hole badge too. Reddit's just wrong. <laughs> I don't I don't understand how collectively Reddit can be wrong as often as it is. The, the teacher should have said, hold on, let me check with them first to make sure they're okay with it. That is the proper way to go about things. However, if you expect everybody to do the proper thing all the time, like that's just not how the world works. People make mistakes. Is she an a-hole? No, she just made a mistake. And also she thinks it's cool. She's like, oh, you get to be in an article. She's looking at uh, the, the world from her viewpoint. So I would do the same thing up to the point where I, I call Mrs. F and be like, hey, I got a call from a reporter. Do you know anything about that? And then she'd be like, oh yeah, you get to be in an article online. I'm gonna be famous. But at that point, you should probably be like, hey, understand that I value my privacy. I don't want this. I think you crossed the line. Then allow her to make amends, allow her to apologize. But the whole idea of like, oh, you slighted me. I'm gonna curse at you and call you names. And then the principal comes in. What did the principal say? Or the vice principal, sorry. Sorry, the VP principal. <laughs> he asked me to be understanding because she's young and lives online. Yeah, he wants you to be a little bit more empathetic to her story. But you're like, no, I am now going to take my anger out and insult you. VP principal. <laughs> so you are a douche. I, you might not be an a-hole, you're a douche. No, 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 you are an a-hole. You know what, I take that back. The VP needs to not be making excuses for her. Wow. Yeah, the VP should just go straight into punish mode anytime he gets a complaint. Have the ability to see other people's perspectives. Someone slights you, think, okay, what, what's going on with them? What's going on in their life? Why did they think that way? And maybe in the end, they're still the a-hole, right? But at least you have that perspective. But if uh, if one of your staff comes to you being like, hey, this, this guy cussed me out. Maybe I shouldn't have given his information away to my friend who was running a story. I thought it'd be cool, but obviously I was wrong. The VP is not gonna be like, you're fired. Let me go bow down and lick this guy's toes to repay him for his suffering. What she did was disrespectful, rude, and unethical. The truth be told, I think teachers 
teachers need to be paid more. It's kind of, it feels weird to, to hold teachers to like this crazy high standard for, for what, like you just give your kids to them for like eight hours a day for nine months of the year. If you're uh, like American, they're paid so little and then they, they are held to like such a crazy high standard, right? Cause they're, they're like literally in charge of teaching your kids. Like this isn't a therapist, right? Those are, that's high paying, high standards. You do not give out other people's personal info without their permission. I agree that I don't think that's the point here, or at least that's not what I'm taking away. I think his reaction to what happened was just incredibly immature. He seems insufferable. <laughs> I kind of hope bad things happen to him. Oh, this one's a little bit more fun. All right, let's, let's, let's take a breather. This one's a little fun. Am I the a-hole for always guessing when my wife asked me to guess? My wife and I have been married for a while and ever since, um, sorry, let me, sorry. my wife and I have been married for a while and ever since that we, oh, fuck. my wife and I have been married for a while and ever since that we got, oh, <laughs> One little typo and it throws me off. I blame this. I'm blaming the post. My wife and I have been married for a while and ever since we got married, she tends to ask me a guess what question whenever something crazy or funny happens. I've always been very literal and grew up with my dad who was a lawyer and mother who worked in the engineering fields. So I've always been held to a high standard when communicating with people. A little braggadocio. I don't know why you're like, <laughs> my mom's a lawyer, my dad's a doctor. I guess I just have a high standard for communication. And my underschooled wife doesn't really know how to properly communicate. It's fine though. <laughs> we make it work. Every time she has asked me a uh, guess what question, I think through where she is, what she had planned for the day, and what we are planning on doing later and respond with a guess. And unfortunately, I am usually spot on or very close in my guess, and that makes her upset. She showed me several articles online <laughs> about how to respond to somebody when they ask you, guess what? And it is usually to say what and get excited. I like guessing though. And I enjoy thinking through the problem and getting the thing she is talking about without her having to tell me outright. She says I'm an a-hole for this, but I want to see what you guys think. Am I the a-hole? Lower, lower stakes, right? This is just like a little marital spat. And one that even if it's never resolved, it's just like, ugh. Well, it is what it is, right? If someone were to tell me like, guess what? I'm going to guess what. Like you gotta be like, ah, what? Tell me. Tell me, I can't wait to find out. Tell me. I have to have like a fake emotion. If the wife is upset about him guessing, then don't ask him to guess. This can't be that difficult. Like you could say for him, it would be an easy change. Just don't guess. And you know what? For him to, to have this level of awareness of being like, hey, this is how I grew up. This is what I was expected. You can now have the uh, the wherewithal to be like, oh, other people aren't like that. So if you're with somebody who just wants you to say what, maybe you should just say what. Wait, what did he guess? He's the a-hole? Lies. This entire post is so dramatic. It is a small issue, right? I, it's not that you don't understand how to respond to guess what, it's that you don't want to respond that way. You're the a-hole, your wife has communicated that something is bothering her and that's super easy for you to fix. And instead of you fixing it, you log into Reddit and go on a rant about how you can't say what <laughs> because of your upbringing. <laughs> that is true. Like when you frame it like that, that's true. Isn't the easy fix to stop saying guess what? You know what? Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Guess what guys? Shut your mouth. If, if you said what, shut your mouth. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> if I have a problem, wouldn't the easiest solution be for me to make the easy fix so that we don't encounter that? I'm the one with the problem and I'm now forcing you to make a change. If I can fix the problem just as easily, then shouldn't I be the one to do it? Saying guess what is an extremely common phrase that people use, telling your partner, I can't answer your guess what question like a human, so you need to stop saying it. <laughs> it's again, so dramatic. I think she just needs to switch it to listen up jabroni. <laughs> It is such a minimal thing. I'm not willing to call anybody an a-hole in this situation, especially from other some of the other stories we heard and we're judging them to be a-holes. He likes answering the question to guess what? She doesn't like him answering guess what? Both could make an easy change. Neither does so. <laughs> Let's just move on. Am I the a-hole for letting my father cause a huge scene at my engagement party and embarrassing my future mother-in-law? My father has many faults. I am well aware of these and therefore tend to keep our interactions private. I still love him and I have developed a system to keep him from effing me over. When my fiance asked me to marry him, I said yes. What a, what a, what a redundant sentence. When my fiance asked me to marry him, guess what I said? If he's your fiance, I would imagine you probably say yes. I'm just still, I'm, I'm a, I need to cool down, all right? The proper way to phrase this sentence. When my fiance proposed, I then went to privately tell my dad about it. I am a writer. Screw you guys. Hey, guess what? I'm a writer. <laughs> so I think her fiance's mother-in-law wanted to have an engagement party. I was fine with it. I just requested that she not invite my father. I explained that we had a strained relationship and that I preferred to keep him at a distance and she agreed. I guess she thought she knew better than me. Uh, she wanted to fix our relationship and the first step was inviting him over to a party with alcohol. His car has a breathalyzer built into it to make it start. That's not a, that's not a cute little feature. That's court ordered. <laughs> it's not like, oh, I got it. Guys, look at me. I got a new Tesla. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's got a little breathalyzer. Yeah, that's just for fun. When I saw my dad there, my stomach flipped. I asked her what was going on. She said uh, that a good daughter would want her father there on this important day. I asked her to please make him leave. 
She said I was being rude. I went over to my dad and asked him to leave. He promised to behave. He was so happy to be invited. This is an episode of The O.C. <laughs> Season 1, episode 3, all right? Ryan's mom is a recovering alcoholic. She gets brought into this world. She goes to a party. I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. I'm not gonna drink at all. I'll just, just one drink. And then she ends up making a scene. We'll see if that happens here. Then the wine came around. I glared at him and shook my head no. He took some, then more, then more. So as the night goes on, she hears him raise his voice, and I asked my fiancé to leave. I faked the stomach problem, and we left. The least embarrassing thing he did was piss himself and puke on the lawn. My fiancé's mother-in-law is furious. She said that we should have told her that my father has a drinking problem. I said that it wouldn't have been a problem if she hadn't lied to my face about not inviting him. Facts. My father is humiliated that he did this. I'm just numb. Some people, you know what I mean? They just think they know better. They think they know better. Why are my R's rolling? <laughs> I don't know. Now it's fine. I know your relationship with your father is strained. Let's bring it in. Let's bring it in for a group hug. How about we don't? Kudos to the fiance though. For just like being on board. Hey, you gotta go? Your father's about to make a scene? Let's get out of here. Also, it's not super fun to have that conversation with your fiance's mother in law, being like, hey, don't invite my dad. He's an alcoholic. But again, again, another post on the subreddit about pregnancy. Because everybody, like literally everybody in this story, as was at one point birthed by a pregnant woman. Right? That's the root of this, is the pregnancy. Am I the a-hole for not keeping up with my wife's cleaning demands? I had a major fight with my wife a few hours ago and I strongly think I'm in the right, but she is so angry, I almost feel like I'm the one crazy. I married my wife three years ago, but we have been together six. One important thing to note is she's extremely clean. I regret not moving in together until we were married because while I knew she was clean, I didn't know the full extent. Let this be a lesson to live with your partner before marriage. She hates dishes in the sink while I'm content to let them sit there for a couple days. Oh, she spends her off days scrubbing bathrooms because in her mind, they should be cleaned weekly. I thought he was about to say daily and I was gonna be like, oh, that is a little extreme, but <laughs> weekly, sir? This didn't start hurting our marriage until we had kids. We have a two-year-old and a one-year-old. I'm a stay-at-home dad. Oh, I'm so jealous. That's my dream job. My job, I mean, <laughs> it's my dream to not work. <laughs> she expects me to do most of the chores now. Well, yeah, obviously. Isn't that like the, the expectation? It's like, hey, if one of us is gonna work and the other doesn't, then somebody takes care of like the foreign affairs, AKA going out into the world and making the resources, while the other one takes care of domestic affairs, tending to the home of the children. And I wouldn't mind if they were reasonable. She wants the children to have a bath every day, and I think every one to three days is fine. She wants all of their toys put away by the end of the day, and I think there's no point when it will be a mess again. She wants all the house bedding washed weekly. <laughs> weekly? That sounds right. She wants me to vacuum weekly? Like, dog, are you serious? That's a low bar. She wants me to mop every three to four days since in her logic, the kids spend a lot of time playing on the floor. Yeah, kids are messy and gross. Because I don't play along with most of her demands, she ends up being the one to do most of the housework when she gets home or on her rare off days. Homie. Oh my, 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 my. I don't like cleaning which kind of hurts my stay-at-home dad dreams a little bit. But you have to look at this as like a job. That means you look after the kids, of course. Primary job number one. But number two, you make sure the home is spick and span. Yeah, it's a phrase, all right. <laughs> Got it. All this could be done in, in less than 10 hours a week, for sure, all this cleaning. And if your wife is coming home from working long days and then doing more work, do you not feel a sense of guilt? This all built up to today. She got home and saw I hadn't yet washed the dishes and there was still grease slash food in some of the pans and on the countertop. Also, I hadn't yet brought in the trash cans from the previous two days when they were empty. Uh, he doesn't, he's doing a poor job of defending himself. Like, what do you do your, like, your whole day? Okay, here's, here's something interesting. I'm so physically sensitive. That was like the smallest bit of contact my elbow had with the edge of my desk. And I, I'm in like a full body panic right now. I'm so, like, I'm feeling like sweaty. She flew off the handle calling me lazy and a slob. I, I don't, I wouldn't blame her. Coming home to a dirty home, you're not working. And if all the pressure is on her to provide the resources for the home, then you need to take care of everything else. Otherwise you go get a job and then hire a maid and a nanny, right? With that money then. Oh, wait, wait, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's the next sentence. She said she would like me to return to work since in her eyes I'm doing a poor job and then use the money to hire a weekly housekeeper and a nanny. And then he's got the edit. Yep, okay, so I'm the a-hole. Reddit's right, yep, you got the badge and this is correct. The common belief is I need to help more around the house. I'll see what I can do and apologize to my wife. Thanks, yeah, good. I wonder about the motivations of people coming to Reddit because he thought like, hey, I'm I'm in the right and I she's making me feel like I'm crazy because she thinks she's in the right. Because I feel like a lot of people know they're not the asshole and then they come to Reddit and everyone's like, no, you're not the asshole. And then they feel good because they're getting the pat 
on the back and they're getting all the emotional support. It's sad though, because he thought that's what he was going to get. And then he ends up getting slapped across the head. Am I the a-hole for asking my girlfriend to continue doing my laundry if she wants me to buy groceries? My girlfriend, who's 28, and I, who's 32, and they've been living together for four years now. She works from home since uh, a couple years ago. But sometimes goes to the office. I go to the office every day. My girlfriend has always done our laundry together and never had a problem with it all these years. Since she works from home, she takes care of a lot of the housework. But I do help out where I can when I get back from work, although she often refuses my offers with reasons like I should wash my hands better. I do wash my hands though. I don't know how to read your sentences. I can't apply inflection when I don't know your punctuation. You're the a-hole. I'm glad. Yes, yes. Correct. This a-hole badge? Correct. Lately, she started separating my undergarments and vests from the laundry pile and not washing them when she had no trouble doing that in the past. Is she that my... Is she that my... She that my... She said that my undergarments will contaminate her clothes and wants me to do them myself in a separate load. <laughs> she got pretty mad and made some nasty comments about my hygiene, saying I should keep myself cleaner in my privates. Not soil myself. I do not. Well, maybe it's natural that men smell more. Oh, it's, it's just a men thing. Yeah, I don't know. Just men smell more. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. Getting pretty annoyed at being treated like I'm disgusting when I'm not. I lived with my mom before her, who did my laundry, and never said my boxes were dirty. I said if she keeps doing this, I will stop buying the groceries. She keeps telling me to bring on my commute from work and she can do that herself. Oh, so like you're on your commute and she like texts you like, hey, can you pick up some milk, right? <laughs> there are three possibilities in my head of what's going on here. Number one, a breakup is imminent. You know, I don't want to wash your clothes. This is the first thing, right? This is the first thing, there'll be a second thing. And then she's like, you know what? Let's just rip the whole bandaid off. Let's break up. The second possibility is he actually just does stink and it's so gross and you need to clean better. The third possibility, is a diabolical one. And I think I got this from an Emma the Ejo story. But basically, it was a story about how this guy would always tell his girlfriend that she didn't smell good. He'd be like, oh yeah, did you shower? Or like, oh, maybe wash, like clean, get yourself cleaner down there. Maybe get like a new shampoo. Until one day she reached her breaking point and then he was like, oh no. And then he had to come clean. <laughs> Pun. He had to come clean to her and he was like, oh, my grandfather told me the story where I should always tell you you smell bad because then you would never have the confidence to leave me <laughs> because you think you stink. <laughs> That's diabolical. It's unlikely. Very, very unlikely. But it's possible. All right. But otherwise, if it's the, if it's the breakup thing, there's nothing you can do. Like you're gonna drive yourself crazy trying to figure out your odor. And like, I don't know what to tell you there. All right, Joe, I think I'm gonna take a little break here. The marathon continues. I saw extravaganza. It's not a marathon, it's extravaganza. Am I the AO for choosing to go on a trip with my girlfriend instead of taking care of my struggling brother's son? This guy's 24, his brother's 31, and his wife, Emma, is 28. They have a son, Kyle, who's four. They moved to my city last year because Emma got a new job. They would occasionally ask me to watch Kyle because I work from home and have very flexible hours. I personally do not like kids at all. Agreed. No one talks about this? Kids? Super downers. My own kids? Greatest things ever, right? Because they're like little me's, right? I can, I can shape them and mold them to be as like me as humanly possible, which means they'll end up pretty great. But other people's kids, gosh, they suck. So I understand where this guy's coming from. He doesn't like kids, but I was happy to do it at the time because I wanted to help them. Now, the issue started near the end of last year when Luke decided to change careers. His new job required him to go to work a lot more often, uh, make substantially less money. This left them depending on me more and more to take care of Kyle. It went from once or twice every two weeks to around three days out of the week. To make matters worse, Kyle's behavior changed drastically. To be completely honest, I could barely stand the kid anymore. Kid sucks? Surprise. Constantly running around and screaming while I'm trying to work and he's just overall being a little snot. <laughs> My sister-in-law, Emma, was was over the other day picking up Kyle and she made some comments about getting rid of some of the dangerous furniture in my house like tables with glass edges and stuff and she also made a joke about baby proofing his house because they're planning to have a daughter this pissed me off but I didn't say anything the situation hit a breaking point last Friday when I was talking about the 1.5 long week trip 1.5 who who divvies up weeks by 0.5s 1.5 just say a 10 day trip, bruh. My 1.5 week long trip. You're the a-hole, that's weird. Upon hearing this, they got pretty mad saying, who is gonna take care of Kyle? <laughs> I need to stop these childish trips. Why, why would a trip be childish? Are you going to like Legoland? What are you, where are you going? What about the trip could be childish? Oh, what a child. Children always go on vacations. Uh, that tells me there's missing context. Cause that's, that's a weird thing to be like, oh, she kept calling my trip childish. Well, why? And then I need to take more responsibility because I'm an uncle now. I'm not gonna lie, after hearing this, I snapped. I said that their demon child isn't my responsibility 
and I'm not just gonna give up my life because they effed without a oh without a condiment without a condiment without ketchup or mustard. Got pretty obscene from there, and some horrible things were said. Some horrible things were who said them, sir? Some horrible things got said. I don't. Was it me? Or was it you? One of us though. <laughs> they left, and we are no longer on speaking terms. My parents and Emma's parents are on their side and extremely angry at me for refusing to pull my weight. My parents said this is my duty, and I should be sacrificing everything to help them. Whoa, slow down. Ah, right, you're pulling me back to your side now a little bit. It's honestly got me really down and I've cried my eyes pretty much every day. I've cried my eyes. <laughs> Since seeing those messages from my family, I'm starting to wonder if I should really be taking more responsibility. No, see, this isn't the problem. Problem is, you didn't set clear boundaries, right? Oh, come on, I love having your kid over. Bring him on over anytime you want. Your brother's probably, if he's like a decent person, he's probably like, are you sure? The fact that they were like, hey, we need to baby proof your house. And you're like, oh, that pissed me off. I didn't say anything though. That's a telling sentence. That tells me you are not having conversations about this. You're not, you don't need to set that boundary being like, hey, I'm not baby proofing my house. I don't want to babysit as much anymore. That conversation, it's uncomfortable. People don't like to have that kind of conversation. That's why things hit a breaking point and then they blow up, right? So it's better to set the clear boundaries early on or even in the middle. Just be like, hey, I'll, let's pull back a little bit. I don't want to babysit as much. And they give you crap for it. Be like, okay, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> you drop the kid off. I'm going to lock the door. So it's not going to be me taking a vacation. It's your kid who's going to be taking a vacation to CPS. <laughs> you guys let me know if you're on the same page. I think that this guy not the a-hole. I don't think that the, the brother and the sister-in-law are the a-holes either because I don't think this guy set boundaries. And also I'm a little bit concerned about the, the omitted information. They made him feel bad for wanting to go on a trip. Like if he's a single guy or you know has a, a partner doesn't have a child basically what I'm saying. That's his right. Like he should be able to go on vacation whenever he wants. Can't stop him from doing that just because you need a babysitter. They abuse his willingness to help essentially. That's the sentiment. That's just kind of like human instinct. Someone's like, hey, I'll look after your kid and I have no problem with it. And then they never bring up any objection to any time you're like, hey, can you take care of them? It's not really, you're abusing it because you don't know that they don't like that, right? And that they communicate it. And this guy doesn't seem like he's communicating. And by the way, for deleting my cousin's precious wedding photos. So this is a 17 year old kid. He agrees to take wedding photos for his cousin, Sarah's wedding. She's 26. There was also another photographer, a friend of the groom, who was taking photos of the groom and his side getting ready. And he was also taking photos at the wedding and reception. It's actually not a bad idea to get the kind of like dual sides of it. You can do a lot of, with that footage. Since I wasn't a professional photographer by any means, I told her I would only charge $50 for the entire day. That seems low, right? At the same time, you can't hire somebody who's never shot a wedding before to be your wedding photographer. Cause you have, it's like, it's your only day, right? <laughs> if the settings on the, the camera aren't proper, they're just overexposed, the, the images get ruined. You don't just have like another wedding. So I think a lot of people who shoot weddings will shoot one or two for free. And then they get like a little portfolio so that people can see like, oh, this is what I get for however much they charge, right? So, and when I say entire day, I mean it from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. I was with her taking photos and basically being harassed by her, her bridesmaids and my aunt. Aunt? <sighs> She was full on bridezilla the entire time, not just to me, but basically everyone, including her husband. It was a long day to say the least. I texted Sarah a couple days later to let her know that they were ready and that I would happily meet up with her and exchange them for the $50. <laughs> exchange them? You mean have her pay you for your work? This makes it seem like hostage. Like, hey, you got the stuff? Well, I got the product, all right? That's not hostage, that's a drug deal. <laughs> she never responded. For the next three weeks, I texted, called, got in touch with her mother, her aunt, aunt. <laughs> Six months passed since the wedding and I was at the movies with my other cousin who was 19, who was Sarah's younger brother. He tells me, so the cousin says, by the way, Sarah was wondering when you were going to give her the photos. She said she would pay you the $10. I was livid. First, it was $50. Second, that was the deal from the start. I told my cousin this and said to tell Sarah if she wanted them, she needed to contact me within two days so we could meet up with the payments. You better bring the money, I'll bring the product, all right? Or that I was going to delete the photos. But she never contacted me. Two days passed, I deleted the photos and erased the USB drives. Less than a week went by before my aunt called me in a fit because I threatened my cousin into paying me. I told my aunt oh, <laughs> that she was, she had a little over six months to put together $50. Plus, listen, you cannot, you don't have a wedding. If you can't afford a $50 payment, don't have a wedding. Weddings are thousands of dollars. Don't have a big ceremony or even any ceremony if you can't afford $50. She refused to respond to me no matter what I tried and that it was too late now because the photos were gone. That's what she, that's what he told the, the aunt. The aunt or aunt, uncle, and a few other relatives have been refusing to talk to me or my parents because I deleted precious photos that could never be taken again. All because I grade. Oh yeah, these precious photos that you couldn't pony up $50 for. You've lived without them for the last six months. You can go the rest of your life without living with them, right? Huh? <laughs>
My mom thinks I should apologize and that I'm just being stubborn. You are being stubborn, but I don't think it's wrong. I think you're in the right. Am I the AO for deleting my cousin's wedding photos? Absolutely not. Put yourself in the woman who got married's shoes. I just got married to love my life. We had a dual photographer set up. I hired an amateur. We agreed for $50. So we got the marriage, the honeymoon. Maybe we're buying a house, we're moving in the house. So there might be a lot going on in the first like month or two after, you know, you get married. But if these are precious photos to me, I should probably get them in my possession. Right? So not only do you get something precious to you, but you keep, you're keeping your word. Uh, maybe it's not important for some people, but I find that incredibly important. But instead you risk it all to try to save $40. I, I'm afraid to look at the comments because I don't want to see anything about this $50 thing. Like, oh my God, $50. That's all you're paying him uh, for someone who worked 14 hours? Paying crumbs for 14 hours of work? Listen, that's, that's the game. You don't just be like, hey, I've never shot a wedding before, but just pay me $1,000. You don't get to do that. You have to create a portfolio. One way to do that is to work for incredibly cheap or for free. Like that's just the way it goes. Otherwise the kid could say no. It's not like the kid got strong armed into doing the job in the first place. Huh? 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 Um, yeah, I need to take a break. <laughs> Okay, Jesus. All right, here, the, the extravaganza. I'm, the extravaganza is a little too extravagant for me. <laughs> we're gonna do this though. Hour long, baby. Hour, we're gonna go for an hour, all right? And by the asshole for demanding my girlfriend tells me her author is pending? So this is a 32 year old guy. He's been dating a girl for 32 years old. Uh, that's 32 years old. So I'm just throwing off by Siobhan. Siobhan? Kind of sounds like an Irishman saying goodbye to his friend Benjamin. Siobhan? She's always been very vague about what she does for a living, saying things like writing and working from home writing. But recently, one of her friends mentioned something and I finally dragged it out of her. Don't like how that's phrased. She's an author. She writes and self-published romance and erotica stories and novels. And while not rich, she's able to make a living out of it. I googled her name and couldn't find anything. So I confronted her about this. She said she's writing under a pen name. So I demanded she give it to me. So I know what she does. She refuses, saying she doesn't want it to be leaked, even by accident, and no one knows. I accused her of not trusting me, and she still refused, which was really annoying. The language is just throwing me off. I finally dragged it out of her, against her will. He confronted her. I demanded. She refuses. I accused. This is like the language you'd use in an interrogation, if you're trying to find out if someone was like a murder suspect. <laughs> like I dragged the confession out of the, the criminal. I confronted the criminal. The criminal refused to talk. I tried a nicer approach and told her that I wanted to know her fantasies. I tried a nicer approach. So you, you know that your approach hasn't been nice up to this point. So you tried a nicer approach by trying to manipulate her. Is that what I'm hearing? That I want to know her fantasies so I could try it out with her. And she told me that she writes, what she writes is in her fantasies, but what her uh, reader's fantasies are. So basically she's not gonna tell him. She knew what he was doing, whether he was obvious about it or not. I think he was probably like, hey, I just I just wanna know what your books are like so that I can do some of the main character stuff, you know, and stuff that the main character does to the woman in the books, I wanna do that to you. And she's like, I don't, I don't want those things done to me. And he's like, shit. <laughs> At night I tried to check her laptop. You are very bold in what you're willing to reveal to us to determine who's the asshole. But she changed her password before bed. <laughs> I was annoyed. Oh, wow. And I told her she clearly doesn't trust me. Nani? I, I don't think anyone should trust you. And it's not fair because I have a right to know what she writes. And especially since it's a sensitive topic. And I don't know her if I don't know her pen name. <laughs> she was furious. I tried to look on her laptop and told me to go home. Before uh, leaving, I told her when she calls to apologize, I expect to get her pen name with the apology. She called me an a-hole on my way out. I thought she'd call by now, but she hasn't. My sister told me I was an a-hole and I should apologize, but I just don't see a need. Second opinion, was I the a-hole? <laughs> No, bro. I, no. I think you acted reasonably, rationally, calmly. It seems like you're you're not the a-hole here. The, the crazy thing is like the fact that you uh you might be slanting the story. This is coming from you, and you are so clearly the asshole. <laughs> like it's impressive how little self-awareness you have. <laughs> you're just a walking red flag. <laughs> These are so facts. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Am I the a-hole for making a teenage girl weigh herself at the top of a water slide? I work as a lifeguard at a water park, and part of my job includes managing the top of the water slide. Slides. Um, to make sure no one does anything dangerous like going face first, cramming too many people onto one inner tube, etc. I'm also instructed to ask anyone who looks like they could be overweight to weigh themselves, because it's a 250 pound weight limit, to, to weigh themselves on our scale and deny them entry if they refuse. I'm not super comfortable with this, but it's much better than risking people's safety. 250 seems low for a water slide. This, this seems like a dingy park. <laughs> Here lies the problem. I lift weights and for this reason, I am very dense. I weigh 185 
but somehow we're a size six. Most of my friends also lift and have similar body compositions to me. For this reason, I have trouble estimating how much someone actually weighs. Problem presented itself last weekend when an overweight teenage girl wanted to ride the slide. She most likely wasn't over 250, but I couldn't be certain. I've gotten better at estimating weights, but my supervisor says if there's any chance they're over 250 to weigh them. So I approached her gently and asked her to please get on the scale. She met me with a snarky teenager attitude and said, what if I would have hit? She was with a group of teenagers, some of whom were giggling. <sighs> okay, okay. <sighs> then you won't be allowed on the slide, I said matter-of-factly. Yeah, snarky little bitch. She then rolled her eyes and got on the scale, and her weight wasn't even close to 250, so I felt kind of bad. She then said, see, and went along with her friends. Although she gave me attitude, I could tell she was embarrassed. Her face is red as she went back to her friends, who were all thin. I asked my supervisor how he would have handled the situation, and he said I did the right thing that it's better to hurt someone's feelings than to break someone's bones. However, yesterday, I was called into the office of the owner of the water park. <laughs> this escalated. Told me she received an angry email from a parent about how I embarrassed their child in front of her friends. I explained to her that I was just following protocol and she asked me how much the girl actually weighed. I gave her the answer and she laughed at me and told me I could never get a job as a weight guesser at a carnival and that I needed to do my job better. My supervisor is backing me up and saying I was doing what he required me to do. I'm thankful for her support, but honestly, the whole situation is making me feel like an a-hole. I know teenage girls are a particularly... I know teenage girls are a particular... I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I know teenage girls are a particularly vulnerable population. As I was a teenage girl not too long ago. And I could have possibly handled that situation with more care. But at the same time, safety is my first priority. Does that make me an a-hole? Guess what, guys? <laughs> I, I don't know. This this oddly feels like one of those situations where it's just it just sucks. But I don't know that you can call this person an a-hole because it wasn't done out of malice. But your over caution may lead to yeah some hurt feelings, maybe a little bit of bullying, pot potentially. You don't know. That's tough. I don't know. I really I don't know. I don't know what that, what what do you do in that situation? Comments. I need help. I need help. You guys tell me, and then also comments. It's a horrible policy though. I. Uh, I don't know that it is. You can't just do away with the policy to not hurt people's feelings and then it's dangerous. Asking people to weigh themselves in front of everyone if they appear fat. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. I guess you could just weigh everybody, but then people are gonna talk about like, why are they weighing us? Oh, if you're overweight, you can't weigh. So that it's, it's, it's gonna happen anyways, you know? Do you have any idea what that could do to someone's psyche? Uh, Y'all need to change that policy ASAP. Change it to what though? It already kind of feels like a rinky ding park. You gotta hire another employee so that you can put up a curtain and then they can just specifically stand there to, to have people come in one at a time to check their weights. Because you need a separate person, a separate employee there, just for that job. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. If someone is too heavy and gets hurt, it's their own fault. Public humiliation is not the answer here. I have to disagree. Last year, a 14-year-old died at a four... Oh, I saw that. I saw that. He was uh, just too big for the, the, the thing that locks him into place. And then the ride goes up. And then it just broke. And... He, oh, yeah. Ooh. Don't get me wrong, being embarrassed for your weight sucks, but if I were in uh, the poster's shoes, I'd rather embarrass someone a hundred times than be indirectly responsible for their death or permanent disability. What do you do, man? You don't want to make people feel bad. If it's to protect them, I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. I'll leave it to you guys then. <laughs> Am I the a-hole for telling my kid if he can't share his food? It might be time for him to move out. On Valentine's Day, I got two large pizzas for my family to eat. Oh, how romantic. And then I went to work. Uh, when I got home from my night shift, I went into the fridge and saw that there was still half a pizza left. I don't, for some reason, the details here just don't feel relevant. I warmed up three slices for my supper and watched some TV with my cat while I ate. If the cat the television, the number of slices. If none of that is relevant to the later part of the story, I'm, you're the asshole. My son got up before I went to bed and looked in the fridge. He got upset that I ate the food he was planning on taking for his lunch. There is lots of other food in the fridge. He said he told his mom that he was taking the pizza for lunch and that I was greedy for eating it. My sin came back to, into the room. My, oh, my son. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's not a typo? That's how he refers to his son. That's my sin. We did the deed. Me and this woman, and there's the sin. 18 years of payments, right there. That's my sin, eh? My sin came back and I, like, dog, I love that so much. My sin came back into the room and he started arguing again. And he had already claimed the leftovers for himself. This is where I might be the ale. I asked him for how much he paid for the boo, eh? Zero dollars. No dollars, huh? I'll find it. How much you pay for rent? Zero dollars, boy. Utilities? Nada. Not, not a, not a thing, eh? 
I'll eat them my pizza. Well, letting them live here. Yeah. So he can save money while he's getting scammed. But I'm sick of this entire little jerk you. <laughs> I told him if he has problem with me eating his leftover food, maybe he should move up so he can have his food safely stored away from me, eh? Huh? My pizza, huh? Then my wife says I'm taking it too far, huh? What are you doing, huh? But he backed out pretty quick and uh, he said he was sorry for me for saying anything, huh? My wife says I'm being an a-hole for scaring him and kicking him out over some leftover pizza. I would never, but he thought it so. So I just said, I'm make a sure. Yeah, the best way to keep the food I, I pay for safe for me is to uh, to live and take it elsewhere, huh? Just go buy your own food and keep it in the refrigerator separate from my living arrangement, huh? So the dad buys pizzas for the family. There's leftovers in the fridge. Father comes home, half a pizza left. He, hi he heats up three slices of pizza specifically and then he eats the food with the cat sitting nearby. Now, this cat, super important to the story. Oh wait, no, he's never mentioned again. So we got this pizza, right? He's eating the pizza. Son, son comes up in the middle of the night. He's like, hey, that's the pizza I was gonna take for my lunch. Father says, hey, this pizza right here, this is my dinner. Oh, this kid's 22. I mean, I knew he's in college, but I'm thinking like 18, 19. He's 22. He has a job. We're letting him stay here so he can save money. We are paying for his college. He doesn't help out with anything except chores around the house. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a small one, eh? Like, I, I there's a little bit of food that you ate by. Uh, no, I wanted that food. Uh, yeah. This one's just interesting because uh, of how mixed this family is. These are Italians. They're Russians. They're <laughs> other unspecified. I don't even know. I just picked up on that, though, in the writing. Am I the a-hole? telling my parents that they made their own bed so they can lay in it when they ask me for help. So this woman's 29. She's pretty much been disowned by the entire family when she came out at 18. My parents gave me five minutes to grab <laughs> to grab my things before shutting me outside. I remember telling them there was no way I could live on my own, that I was their kid and that they should want to love and support me. This, this is pretty bad, but at least this girl has never had to go through coming down in the middle of the night, opening the fridge and seeing that the pizza's gone. So I say you got it pretty lucky, girl, all right? My father told me that I made this bed myself by choosing my lifestyle, so, so I should just grow up and learn to lay in it. I love how this... The story's gonna turn. I turned out pretty okay, all things considered. I was able to go to college. Ugh, sorry about that. Things just get worse when it rains and pours. I met my wife during our freshman year, and I've been with her ever since. We have a two-year-old daughter who is the most precious little person in the world. Oh, it's such a cute little child. That's what that one guy thought about Kyle. The uncle, you remember him, eh? Oh, it's a cute little kid, I'll take care of him. Turns four, little demon. We bought a house, and we both have decent paying jobs. I consider myself to be incredibly lucky, and I can't imagine my life without my wife and our daughter. I don't know about lucky. Like, you probably worked really hard to put yourself in these positions. I don't keep in touch with my bio family, so I don't know my how my parents got my contact info, but they did. My mom sent me a message detailing the financial issues they were going through. They had to sell the house I grew up in, and they moved to some apartments. At the end of the message, my mom asked me if I'd be willing to help them out for a little while by letting them stay with me. <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't respond to the message. I planned on pretending like I never saw it, but then I got a call the other day, and as soon as I answered, I realized my dad was on the other line. He told me the same thing as my mom, that they needed help. I said, that really sucks. <laughs> Hope you figure it out. And then flat out asked if I was seriously not going to provide them with any assistance. I asked why he wanted my help, and he told me that I should want to support my parents the way they supported me growing up. Oh, you mean very conditionally? Yeah, okay. I replied saying that maybe if their support of me had it ended the moment I told them I was a lesbian, I'd be willing to help them. But unfortunately, they made their bed themselves so they can lay in it too. I hung up on him and later he left a voicemail calling me selfish and cruel for using their financial struggles to prove a point. Maybe it is cruel. I don't know. Edit, I sent my mom an email with a bunch of links to soup kitchens, food pantries, housing assistance, etc. And then I blocked both her and my dad. Oh, okay. So sometimes I doubt the authenticity of some of these Emma the A-hole posts because they're just a little too, like, revenge fantasy, you know? Like, it's just, like, a, too neat of a story. Like, it's like Cinderella. Like, cruelty of the parents. Well, it's not like Cinderella. <laughs> it's not like Cinderella at all. <laughs> I don't know why I made that. Like, in my head, I was like, oh, it's like Cinderella. No, it's not at all. But the parents were, like, cruel, turned their back on the kid, and the kid grows up living a successful life. Like, happy, good job, great family. And then the parents come, and they're like, hey, we're struggling. We could use your help. I don't know, it's just too neat of a, of a circular, perfect Hollywood story, you know? I genuinely will say it, preach kindness, you know? Like, just try to be as kind to people as possible, but you can't be uh, naive to the, the ways of the world and the ways of people. If people mistreat you for long periods of time, it's just gonna weigh on you if you just continue to show kindness to people that will just take advantage of you and disapprove of you and don't like you. So you don't have to treat them poorly. 
you could just remove them from your life and you don't have to feel guilty about it, even if it's family, right? This year at the end, I sent my mom an email with a bunch of links to soup kitchens, food pantries, housing assistance, and then block them. That can come across as passive aggressive. Can't it, you know? You need help? Here's where the needy people go. Go on over there now. Goodbye. Like if you're receiving that message, you don't know if it's coming from a good place or not. I remember probably the most controversial post, the post that you guys disagree with me on most, the five weeks post-pregnancy woman and then the mother-in-law still disagree to this day. <laughs> but I remember in that story, essentially the, the father didn't stand up to his mother-in-law. So she took the baby and then went to her mom's house. And then a couple days later, she sent a photo of the baby to the father. Now we don't know what the message was. We don't know what it said, how it came across. He didn't take it very well. And I think to him it came across as like, oh, here's the baby you're missing out on. Such a good father, right? You can have good intentions, but this can kind of come across as a little bit, if you're on the other side of it, it's a little bit like, what are you, what are you trying to say here? Is this really coming from a good place? Now she's finding like a small fault in the end of the story there. But uh, for the most part, we're all on this woman's side, right? The parents can go suck one. Normally I take the route of temperance and advocate taking the high ground. Oh, okay, yeah, Redditor. <laughs> all Redditors are extremists. That's just the fact of the matter. <laughs> Am I the asshole? I didn't attend my son's wedding. I spent the evening with his ex-wife. What? Quick backstory. After graduating high school, my son moved three states away for college. <laughs> Getting scammed at a distance. At 19, he married a girl he met. I tried convincing him to wait because I personally felt he was too immature. They both dropped out and moved back here to his hometown. <laughs> oh no. Good idea, drop it out of college, you realize the scam. At 20, they had the first child, a beautiful little girl. 16 months later, my daughter-in-law gave birth to their second child, the little boy. After the first baby, my wife and I noticed our daughter-in-law wasn't happy. Just after the second arrived, my son and his wife separated. Wait, wait, after the first baby, daughter-in-law wasn't happy? I think everybody knows the best way to get over your depression after having a baby. I have one more. Oh, are you still depressed? Oh, Sir, I'll take another. Here go two more for you. LeBron James. That's a LeBron James a meme, Joe, if you don't know it. Here go two more. So they separated. She would bring the kids over for a visit. It was then she began unloading on us. I know there's two sides to every story, but considering I know my son, I believe her. You I sat my son down numerous times to speak with him regarding his marriage. He refused to take responsibility, blamed her for everything, even when I directly pointed out where he was the sole problem. That's a great question to ask people if you're dating. When was your last relationship, your long relationship? And then ask, like, what do you think you did poorly? And just kind of see what how the answer unfolds. That could be a sign of a uh, lack of accountability, you know? They got into counseling for a year. Things were okay on the surface. Daughter-in-law filed for a divorce, though. My son, three days later, was on Facebook announcing his new girlfriend. <laughs> a month later, they weren't engaged. I can't imagine the son being the a-hole, so someone else has got to be the a-hole in the story, right? My son had forced his then-wife to become a permanent stay-at-home mom at the birth of their first child. And this is his hometown. So he convinced her to move to his hometown to have their family, so she doesn't know anybody. And now she's a stay-at-home mom, so she doesn't have any work relationships. Oh my goodness. She, of course, had no other family or friends here. Yep, there you go. She had nowhere to go with two small children. Unbeknownst to our son, my wife and I helped her financially and got her an apartment. Let's finish the story, but I, I think I have a, an interesting thought. Here. Before the divorce was even finalized, we received a wedding invitation. <laughs> is that even, uh, is that legal? I guess the in wedding invitation. You could save the date for months down the line. If somebody's divorce isn't finalized, are you sending out wedding invitations? Would you want to be with somebody who proposes to you before they're even out of their... I asked this question, but I know people. People overlook these flags in others. I made it clear to my son I would not be attending and they would not have my blessing. His mother told him she would see to it that I would attend. His mother told her? Your wife? Is that is that weird to anyone else? The fact that he refers to his wife as his son's mother? <laughs> Unless they're, maybe they're not together anymore. I also asked him not to bring his fiance around our house out of respect for the mother of his children. The wedding happened February 11th, and the night before, my wife gave me the final push. My wife. No, they're still married. Is that not weird to call your wife your son's mother? Like, that's how you refer to her. Who's that woman there? That's my son's mother. I did not attend. Our daughter also did not attend for the same reasons. My wife picked up our grandkids, got them dressed, and attended the wedding. My daughter and I decided to spend the evening with his ex. I couldn't imagine her sitting alone while the, her kids attended their father's wedding. I just wanted her to know she'll always be considered family to us. She was very tearfully grateful. I realized just how badly she needed our support and specifically on that night. That's very sweet. The next morning, my son called me to tell me how much of a horrible father I am for not attending his wedding. A few days later, he caught wind that I spent the wedding evening with his ex. He said that <laughs> this is the ultimate form of trail. And further, myself and his sister would have to earn a relationship with him on his terms only. 
<laughs> oh, this guy is a manipulator. You could, I could just feel it. 19 years old, get married. Come with me to my hometown. Let's try counseling. I'll be in another relationship as we do it though. And then while he's in the other relationship, he's like, hey, well, let's get married. I'm still married, but I, let's, I, you and I get married. We'll figure it out. Legal system, whatever. You have to earn a relationship with me, putting the onus on other people. Ooh. If the son wrote a post about his father not attending his wedding day, obviously omitting certain details that make him look poorly, would we side with the son? I think we would. And that's what I went back to with um, that post I was talking about, the five weeks post-pregnancy woman who had an argument with the, uh, the mother-in-law who didn't cook her dinner. If the mother-in-law wrote the post about the daughter-in-law, I think we would side with the mother-in-law. I think the person posting is 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 going to sh show us all the things that are bad, but they're not gonna show anything that's good, you know? Like if the son came and was like, hey, and he, he could be manipulating us, we wouldn't know, right? We don't know him as a person outside of just what he posts. He's like, hey, yeah, I got married at 19. Uh, she had really pushed for, for marriage. She got pregnant, we wanted to do the right thing or so I don't know, whatever the situation is. You could say like, oh, she was verbally abusive. We, we tried counseling, I just couldn't do it. Then somebody stepped in the picture, somebody I used, I had been able to tell my problems to. She was very supportive, very understanding. Uh, she's the love of my life. And I, I, I knew that I had to be with her and I couldn't be with my abusive wife, right? But my father refuses to, uh, to, to listen to my side of the story. And even on my wedding night, he spent it with my ex, who is a horrible person, horrible mother, hor right? He didn't know this side of the story. You'd be like, oh my God. That, that's a terrible father, right? It's all about how you frame stories. Certain things that are said like, yeah, you have to earn a relationship with me on my terms. You you come across as a major douchebag and I, I believe a lot of this. Uh, I just think oftentimes about what the other person, if they made an Am I the a -hole post, what it would look like and uh, how much we would side with them, you know? It's funny though that uh, that a parent can do such a good job, like making this, this girl who gave up everything. She dropped out of college, she gave up a career so that she could have a family with this guy. And she moved away from her family and her friends several hundred miles. For the parents to see that sacrifice and treat the daughter better than you treat the son, the son that you raised and grew attached to. Like it's so weird that you can make such a, like, such a kind, emotionally intelligent decision to be there for somebody who needs it. But then also, your child grew up to be such a, a mean person. Ooh, this, okay, okay, I haven't thrown any to you guys. So let me throw this one. This is one I want to throw to you guys. Am I the a for misleading my husband for years to make him pay for our daughter's education? This is a 45-year-old woman. She's been married to her husband, who is 56, since I was eight, since you were 18. You've been married since you were 18? FBI, open up! So when you were 18, he was... 29. And you got married when you were 18. So when did you start dating? 15, 16, where he was 26, 27. I have a son, 27, and a daughter, 22. We're not rich, but decently well off. We always planned for our son to study abroad in a Western country for university. Hey, hey, listen, I might be a little bit too judgmental on the AG app. I, I don't know what's normal uh, around the world, I guess. And maybe it was like a quick, it was a quick, you know, like maybe she turned 18. So after she was 18, they then started the courtship and they were just so in love and they got married within a few months. <laughs> I don't know. So we always planned for our son to study in a Western country for university. However, ever since I got a laptop and a phone with internet. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Whew, okay. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna like what I'm about to read. Ever since I got a laptop and a phone with internet, I have used it to learn new things on my own. Sources like MIT Courseware and YouTube. And I really wanted my daughter to be an educated woman. I maybe rescind the charitability I was giving. Like with the age gap thing. Cause it just, it feels like you were completely separated from the rest of the world. Ever since I got a laptop and a phone with internet. I don't know. It just kind of it reframes things a little bit. You know, I don't know how to say that. I, don't, I just don't like it. <laughs> but this is awesome. Cause I use the internet mostly to upload these videos and then to like watch Love Island and stuff. I, it's not It's not healthy. It's not good stuff. She's like learning MIT. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I also stopped believing in my religion while my husband is devout. Oh, she continues to pretend to be religious and follow our customs for the sake of our marriage. I only have a high school level education. The plan for my daughter was to find a boy from a nice family for her to marry and not to go to university or go to a local one if she wanted to. I convinced my husband that these days, boys from good families want an educated woman for status reasons, even if she does not work. And that if our daughter had a Western degree, she could marry into an elite family. It worked. And he paid for her to attend a top university, which is actually better than the one my son went to. Dog, how gullible is this guy then? Like they're talking about how expensive it is. A top university? What if it's 60,000 a year? Let's just say 60,000 a year. Just throwing a number out there. 60,000 a year over a four year degree? It's like, 
$800,000. Just because your wife was like, I think boys like this. Like, wouldn't you like ask around about that first? You know, like if you're that gullible to just toss aside nearly a million dollars, you kind of deserve to be taken from. I'm very scam friendly when it comes to this, right? My daughter, after leaving, also confided to me that she does not believe our religion anymore and started living a different lifestyle, one I could never have. She, she recently graduated, got a work visa, and stayed in the Western country and has a good job there. My husband got really angry when he heard and is feeling really cheated and blames me as I persuaded him to pay for her education and let her go. He even found a picture of her online where she won a prize and posted her picture without a head covering. I feel a little guilty since it is his money that let her go to university and now we may not get to see her again. Am I the a-hole? Sorry for any mistakes, my English is not the best. Anytime I see that phrase, oh sorry, my English is like my second language. You realize most people that speak English as their first language don't know any other language. You're so far ahead of us. You don't have to apologize for anything, right? I can barely speak my first language good. Let me know, let me know how you guys feel about this one. I guess let me, let me set up the structure for both sides of it because I feel like it's all gonna go to one side, uh, which is probably the side I would be on as well. First side is, hey, people should choose the lives that they want that make them the happiest, you know? It is a little bit deceitful. I guess we'll go to the other side. It's deceitful to, uh, to lie to the father. Oh God, I, I don't, I don't know. This one's hard. I don't know if I have the other side. It's somebody you trust entirely is telling this to you. And then also she's faking her religion. Your wife is faking her religion just to appease you. The only, I only really know Christianity from a religious standpoint. I haven't like, searched research into a bunch of uh, other religions i'm too busy watching love island using the internet for that <laughs> they can get a little bit extreme with some of their rules I, like I, I don't i feel like irresponsible talking on that you know because i know so little about it and what it means to people but yeah you, let me know i it just it doesn't feel good to be lied to it goes back to being genuine i, I the fact that like you would just pretend then there's like religion which is where people put a lot of their purpose he's devout Ooh. I guess I, I do like a lot of the modern concepts of people being able to choose the, the life and the future that they want. Her getting the internet and wanting to take MIT courses for the mom is amazing. And then uh, wanting that for her daughter. She can still make all the traditional choices if she wants, but she has all the tools to access, um, I guess, any part of the life she wanted to choose. And if the father was that conv I'm giving my opinion. You know what? That shit's tip. Shh, shh. Boogies. That was the extravaganza. Do you feel extravagant? Do you feel extravagantized? Hope you do. Season one of Am I the A-Hole has been fun. We'll come back. Joe and I will start working on the Friends video and then, you know, we'll come back. We got that trailers video, the, the trailers and your secrets. We're super excited about some of the stuff we got coming up. So, uh, stay tuned. Hey. Ooga. Boom.